Hello, hello YouTube. It's been a long time since I've made a video, so firstly I want to apologise for, for not making one sooner, but I've had lots of things going on. As you can see behind me, uh, I've moved into a new flat with my girlfriend, which is lovely. Uh, and it was only time you see that. Uh, secondly, I'd also just, a couple of weeks ago, handed in my dissertation for my Masters, so everything was getting sort of very um, stressful, and I didn't really feel like I had time to concentrate on making videos for YouTube, but now it is all done, and so hopefully in the next couple of, you know, weeks I'll be able to put stuff up more regularly, regularly, he said. So, uh, I thought I would start this video, I was inspired to kind of make something um, about this. Uh, I was in Bristol, which is where I live, which is good, because obviously if I wasn't in Bristol, I did. If, I, if I lived in yeah, Manchester and I was in Bristol, um, without, without good reason, I, that'd be horrible. It'd be Crap, it'd be terrible. Anyway, so I was in Bristol and getting my phone uh, back from the particular shop. Um, I I didn't hack at it. I had something to do with the battery. So as I picked that up, there was a fellow preaching out in the street, uh, and so I, I entered into a kind of I kind of engaged him um, for about 20, 25 minutes or so. I can't really remember the, the time or how long I was talking to him for. And so I just thought I'd take time to kind of talk about some of the things that we covered. He was a uh, Christian fellow with the Bible, He's a really nice guy, um, you know, um, not one of these kind of hell and brimstone things, but I, it was nice to kind of engage someone uh, and talk about what they believe and, you know, and what they see as being uh, the correct thing, you know, what their, what their worldview is. So the first thing we kind of, I approached him on was the idea of being born with sin, in his opinion. Um, you know, from the sin that Adam committed, Adam brought sin into the world, yet simultaneously sin had always existed. Um, and that, so, you know, I didn't really understand how sin was simultaneously before God or at the same time as God, but then Adam then brought sin into the world and that no one, no one, that's it, people are born with sin because of Adam, but at the same time, you know, uh, you know, it's not their fault. But they can choose to be rid of sin, and being rid of sin means by obeying the word of God. Uh, so, and I found this all bizarre, uh, and, it, and it brought up questions for me of, of, of free will too. It's like that um, Christopher Hitchens has a, uh, a way, I, I'm pretty sure he's um, pretty sure he's quoted off someone else, but it's the, the idea of being created sick and then commanded to be well. It's not a kind of, I don't under, I can't really understand it. So the idea is you're born with sin, this kind of sin sat around your neck. Uh, and if you can remove it, then you can go to heaven. But if you still wear it, then you go to hell. And I said, that's madness. You know, we, you know, look at these lovely people around here. I'm a nice guy. I don't believe there's a God, but I, I try and be nice to people. Um, and, and I try and live a good life. So you're telling me that when I die, I, I'm going to be tortured forever. I don't see how that's free will at all. Um, you know, and he said to me, you know, God created free will because he didn't want us to be robots. But it's not a choice. It's not a... That's not a choice between doing what I say to the letter or burning forever. That's that's not a choice. No one so. But he said, Ah, no. People don't burn forever. And I said, well, what, what, what do you mean, uh, Mr. Mr. Christian? He said, No, no, people don't burn forever. Apparently, um, yeah, only uh, the devil and his angels burn in the lake of fire. And I was, and he said, You're not the devil. And I was very tempted. And I, I maybe uh, had I been in a, in a worse mood, I, I would have. Meant, you know, said that I could be, but uh, and that would have opened up a whole new avenue of the conversation. But um, no, I, I stuck and I, I, I said, oh, okay, so it's just the devil that goes to, to hell then. He gets the devil and the sin goes to hell. And it's like, ah, I see. So the way it is, it, it turns out when people, uh, you know, when people uh, go are born with sin, they go to they don't go to hell, but the sin goes to hell, and because they're with the sin, they go to. So it's sort of you know, it's one of these ways of sort of rewording the whole thing so that it's not saying you're going to hell, it's saying uh, the sin in you is going to hell and therefore you are going to hell, you know? Um, you know. It's one of these sort of mobsterish kind of things and it, lots of different people have made different analogies, that whole sort of, um, you know, uh, we were, oh, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely soul you've got there, wouldn't want anything to happen to it, you know? Um, I mean, I'm not saying anything, I'm not saying, you know, but, you know, if you were to just, you know, not do what I say, you know, who knows what would happen, you know? When you die, who knows? It's one of those horrible kind of things. I, I don't, I don't like being being told that. And so, yeah, free will became incredibly problematic. And had I had more time, I would have, I would have maybe put the uh, 
put the perhaps the, the idea of an example, perhaps a baby is born and very, very tragically dies within its first year, you know, it, it's never, you know, hasn't been christened, it hasn't um, known Christ in any way, it hasn't read the Bible, obviously it can't read, it's a baby, but it's born with sin, but it, I don't understand how, you know, how we can justify torturing that baby forever and ever and ever. Um, you know, and he's like, oh, no, God would never do that. And I said, well, he was, you know, he was more than willing to, to sacrifice his son to show us how much he loved us. I mean, and I, I asked the man, I said, you know, would you sacrifice your son, um, you know, uh, if God told you to? And he said, no, God, God wouldn't do that. God, God wouldn't make me do that. And I said, well, what about, you know, the, the woman in the United States a couple of years ago who drowned her kids because she had the voice of God telling her to? And he said, no, God would never tell anyone to kill their child. God would never make anyone do that. And I said, ah, well, what about uh, Abraham and Isaac? You know, that thing from the Old Testament where the, uh, you know, and this happened about five or six times. I, uh, I, I said, what about Abraham and Isaac? Because very famously, God says, you know, you should sacrifice your son to me. Uh, and just as he's about to do it, God goes, ah, I'm just messing with you. And says, no, it's fine. I just want to see if you'd uh, obey me and, and sacrifice your son. Um, and this, this man would respond to me every single time by going, ah, but you must understand. He didn't actually, he didn't kill, didn't go through and kill his child. He didn't kill his child. God told him to. Uh, but he didn't kill the child. And he goes, but every time I'd have to respond with, you're missing the point. It's, it's irrelevant as to whether, the, whether Abraham killed Isaac or not. The, the idea of the fact that you are willing to kill your own son because God told you to, it's just a crazy thing. It's a, it's a, it's a nasty thing. I don't understand how it can possibly be a moral thing. So we were discussing um, the Trinity as well. That was something... Um, that was that was sort of cropping up in our conversation too, and this I love talking to different denominations of Christianity about the idea of the Trinity because it's just such a mindfuck. Um, the idea that you've got a, a God uh, and then His Son, who's also a bit of Him, but then the Spirit is the both of them put put together. The Spirit's both of them, but then the two of them come together to make the Spirit, but they can't be there without the Spirit. And the Spirit goes over the land, and Jesus was the Word, but He was also the Son, uh, and He was born of a virgin, but He's always been there. And it's kind of, you know, he is the son, but he isn't. But the, the father and the son are two. So the Trinity is an incredibly messed up thing. Um, and as I said, I like seeing what different people's takes on it are because it's just such a, a double think kind of Orwellian madness kind of thing to it. Um, you know. Um, so yeah, we spoke about the Trinity for a while and, and that was okay. Um, and there was another thing that I also picked up upon the idea that Jesus died for our sins and. Was it really a sacrifice if he came back to life afterwards? I mean, what's the kind of the, the deal with that? Um, so I, I was talking to him for that about a while, but then it was the idea of sending the Son. Sending the Son in. Because God, obviously, apparently Jesus was there at the beginning and he'll be there at the end, but he was born of a virgin and had a normal life. But another crazy thing to it is the idea that he was necessary at all. Because... For all the times the fellow could keep saying to me, ah, but God loved us, and so he sent his son as a sacrifice to us for our sins, or yada yada yada. I, I just can't wrap my head around as to why. Because, why not just skip the whole Jesus thing, and God just, you know, Monty Python-esque, heavens open, the big flappy mouth, uh, the Terry Gilliam animation, and say, look, all of you, just cut it out, here I am, I'm God, you're relieved of your sin, you know, here I am, I'm real, you will go to heaven if you follow my word, if you do not, then you'll go to hell, close the thing there, you know? And so I just couldn't understand why it was necessary. Uh, and he said, ah, yeah, but he sent his son to communicate his word, and I was like, oh, okay, well, well my dad sent me here to talk to you because he doesn't like what you're doing at the minute. And the guy looked at me as if I was a bit mad, and I said, no, no, my dad sent me here to talk to you about what you're doing. Do you not find that a bit strange? And so he finally, after a couple of times, I tried to sort of show the analogy and say how that's kind of a messed up thing, that, that my dad, who's all the way back in sort of, you know, um, in Buckinghamshire, would have a problem with him in, in you know, in the West Country, uh, and would send me as an, a proxy, even though he was the one who had the problem with it. So I don't find Jesus to be a necessary thing. It's almost like some guy just pretended he was the Son of God. But I don't want to be that kind of, you know, that kind of speculative, uh, you know, um, and sort of uh, come with that. So, yeah, why send the sun in? That's that's one of the things there. So um, the next thing we kind of moved on to uh, was that circular thing. You know, the Bible is the word of God. Why is it the word of God? Because it says it's the word of God. How can you trust it? Because it's the word of God. It's that that circular reasoning. 
um, yeah, vi viciously circular or virtuously circular, however it is people like to like to talk about it, depending on which kind of side of the argument you come down on. Uh, it's either viciously circular or it's virtuously circular. Um, you know, um, so yeah, I'd just like to round it off with two things, and one of them was the idea of, uh, we spoke a little while about, about uh, faith, and he was saying, even you have faith, and I said, sir, I do not have faith. I have a reasonable expectation of the world around me. And he said, no, no, you must have faith when you cross the road, for instance. You know, you don't, have, you don't know what's going to happen. And I said, no, 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 you're right. But what I do is I look at the evidence. I look to my left and to my right to see if cars are coming. Okay, I don't just shut my eyes and walk across and, and hope and pray that, that, that a car doesn't hit me. I, I use my eyes, I use my functions, and I, I you know... And I say there are some things that I can know for a hundred percent certainty. So it's not that I, uh, you know, I'm not living in this kind of more you know, this relativistic kind of uh, valueless uh, existence. You know, I can know for a hundred percent fact that I exist because if I didn't exist, then I wouldn't be able to question as to whether I exist or not. So that's that's that that's one thing I can know for certain. I mean, there are some axioms that you just have to go with, and they are, you know, circular in nature, I guess, but but there, it is that kind of virtuous circle as I was talking about. Um, so yes, um, so existence is, is something that, that is a certainty for someone otherwise, you know, because obviously if they didn't exist they wouldn't be able to talk about it. So that's that. So the notion of faith, um, I have certainty to certain degrees. I mean I can look to my left and my right when I'm crossing the road, but I can't know that a grand piano is about to fall on my head. That's just something I cannot be completely certain of, but that doesn't mean I can't, you know, I can't go on with my life scared that pianos are going to fall on my head everywhere I go. I have to be mental not to do that, you know. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, that, that was it really, it was the idea of faith, and so he was responding to me um, and, and, and going through scripture and things, and it, it was, that was it, he said, look, if I was, sta this is what he said to me, he said, look, if I was standing in your shoes, you know, I, and coming at it with this intellectual mind, you know, I'd have the same sort of position as you. Uh, and I said, yeah, you know, um, but, you know, he said, but what you need to do is not look at it, you know, with, with, with the mind, but feel it. I was like, all oh, right, okay, yeah, so sorry. Dis so, you know, it was literally, it was literally, you know, one or two words away from pretty much saying, discard rational thought and you can embrace this thing. Um, but, you know, obviously I'm not, I'm not putting a big down, I'm not saying anything nasty. He seemed like a nice guy and I had one of these lovely leaflet things here, which was nice. Um, but apparently, yeah, um, I, I need to repent um, because sin is doing my own will. Even if, so, so if I if I save a child's life who, who's fallen off, and I, I choose to do that against God, so so um, you know, uh, I'm about to go catch a, a falling child who's you know a hundred foot building. You know, this is just uh, run with me on this. So I'm about to catch a kid, and God says, "No, you can't do that." And I catch him, and I've saved a child's life. Is that sin? Because I'm... So sin is doing my own will, but I was born with sin. So is sin free will? But then God gave us free will to choose not to sin? It's, it's a mad kind of double think that I couldn't wrap my head around. Um, but anyway, yeah, I said, I said goodbye to the guy. Uh, and, you know, um, like I said, he seemed like a perfectly nice, nice person, which was nice to talk to him about. So yeah, there are a couple of things there that are a bit kind of problematic, as I say, for someone such as myself who, who comes at it from this kind of rational point of view. And that's not to say I don't appreciate the beauty and wonder of the universe before anyone gets me for being this sort of cold, hard, uh, selfish kind of, uh, kind of guy, but um, yeah. Um, so that's it, that was my encounter today, and I thought I would make a video about it and, and, and talk to you, talk at you rather, uh, for a while, so um, yeah. Um, if anyone can actually explain the Trinity to me without it sounding like the craziest thing in the world, then please feel free to get in touch. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of these things. So, yeah, um, so that's it really. Um, as I said, I, um, just to tell you this just before I go, I actually made uh, a video where I pretty much copied what I was saying here word for word. Um, well, not word for word, but I covered the same sort of talking points and I tried to do it on my laptop because at the minute I'm on my, uh, my iPod recording this. And um, it was only after I'd done the 15 minutes of talking like I've been doing now that I realised my mic wasn't on, it was just recording the, uh, just recording the video, so I was literally just got a 15 minute clip of me going. Uh, yeah, so it was, it was, it was, um, it, it, that was quite irritating. So it's been an hour or so, so I thought I'd come back and, and, and have another go at it. But uh, anyway, all the best, and I will make another video hopefully soon. I've got a couple of ideas, some silly, some not so silly. But yes, take care. Goodbye.
Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye.